All right, I think it's about time to get started. So um, let me welcome you to the opening of CNI's uh, virtual event that's part of our spring 2022 uh, member meeting. I'm Cliff Lynch, the director of CNI, and um, with some help from uh, Diane Goldenberg Hart and uh, Paige Pope, I'll be um, sort of moderating our way through this session today and again tomorrow. I want to extend a welcome to our member representatives and our guests. Um, I'm delighted to see so many people joining us. Um, it's wonderful that some of our international colleagues are able to be with us. Um, I have to believe that this is probably among the easier international trips that you've made over the years. Um, and uh, I'm glad you can be with us. I'd also like to extend a special welcome to a number of um, individuals who are involved in various community leadership uh, development programs that um, CNI uh, makes an effort to support, notably the ARL Leadership Fellows. The Clear Fellows, many of whom you've had an opportunity to meet during uh, previous um, uh, virtual CNI sessions over the past uh, year and a half or so. And uh, I would note, by the way, that they are putting a new, um, a, a new cohort of Clear Fellows together. And I look forward to introducing you to some of those new Clear Fellows when we uh, get together in December. Uh, so um, it will be uh, great to be able to do that. Uh, we have some of the folks from the ARL Leadership and Career Development Program, the LCDP program, and I welcome them. Finally, um, I'd like to welcome some of the participants in the uh, leading program, the uh, LIS Education and Data Science Integrated Network Group. Um, these this is a very, very interesting program that's bringing in people from all over our community. Um, we had an opportunity in our in-person December meeting to hear from a number of the leading fellows. And um, I'd invite you to watch the video of that if you're unfamiliar with the program. For those of you who will be in San Diego next week for our in-person event, we will include a series of lightning presentations from a number of additional leading fellows as part of that. Let me say a few things about the meeting and the meeting format and structure and put that in a slightly broader context. So um, in the interest of trying to make the best use of everyone's time, um, we have reduced the synchronous virtual meeting to two afternoons and in an attempt to um, be a little less punitive to the people on the West Coast, we have scheduled it to run from one to a little bit after five, perhaps somewhere between 5.15 and 5.30 Eastern time, uh, both days. Um, the, this seemed like a better, a better way to do things than going sort of two and a half days for our virtual meeting as we did in December. We are holding this meeting again in a web meeting rather than a webinar um, format. This allows you, among other things, to see who else is with us here. And please feel free to um, uh, both share your comments broadly in the chat, but also to uh, say hello to particular colleagues that you haven't um, perhaps caught up with in a while. Um, we will be basically running this straight through between now and um, the end of the meeting. Uh, we'll, I, I'll take us from one session to the next. We have got two scheduled 15 minute breaks at 2.15 Eastern and at 3.45 Eastern. 
uh, where, um, where we will pause for 15 minutes, um, although we'll leave the, uh, we'll leave the um, conference, uh, the, the conference um, web, web conference live and open during that time. So you don't need to go away and log back in unless you want to. Um, when we've got two meeting, two, two sessions back to back, um, I'll simply uh, conclude the questions for one and introduce the next and, and we won't really take a pause between them um, uh, as, as will be the case after this introduction. I do want to note that we will be recording all of the sessions, um, so these will be available later. I also just want to remind you that unlike our meeting in December, um, we have now completely decoupled pre-recorded videos, project briefings from our, um, from our uh, in-person um, uh, meetings and our um, uh, synchronous uh, virtual meetings. Uh, it, it, it took a while for this to really filter through, but it actually makes zero sense um, to uh, try and synchronize um, uh, the release of those pre-recorded meetings. All it does is um, absolutely ensure that people have more material than they have time to deal with between the virtual synchronous meeting, the in-person meeting, um, and the pre-recorded videos. So what we're doing instead is we are issuing calls every couple of months for um, pre-recorded project briefings, and we are putting them together with some navigational apparatus and releasing them in groups of about 10 or 12. Uh, you'll see the first group of those pre-recorded um, um, uh, project briefings coming out in April. So, um, other things that I want to mention um, today, we are trying another innovation uh, in these virtual sessions today and tomorrow. Um, each day, we've asked a couple of people from the community who don't have any speaking chores but expected to be able to attend um, most or all of the sessions for at least that day to spend a couple of minutes reflecting at the end of the day on um, things that particularly interested or excited them or things that they heard that were surprising or unexpected for some reason, just to um, uh, broaden out, you know, the, the perspectives on what you hear today and tomorrow a little bit. Um, please understand that the purpose of this is not for um, these commentators to give a synthesis or summary of the day, uh, but rather to just highlight their perspectives on some important takeaways from the meeting. And I hope you'll find that useful and stimulating uh, as well. Um, those will be short and we'll do those at the meeting wrap up both today and tomorrow. I also want to note that while today everything is contributed project briefings, we have two special invited sessions tomorrow. One that will open the meeting where we'll hear from Heidi Fraser Krauss, who is the new CEO of, um, of JISC in the UK, and um, a closing invited session uh, at the end of the day tomorrow from Marissa Parham. Um, Marissa is the chair of the recently appointed American Council on Learned Societies Commission on um, Sustainable and Diverse Digital Scholarship. Um, this is an important initiative that was announced very late last year. It's really just getting uh, rolling, and I think it's really important for our community to understand what they're seeking to do 
um, some some sense of their timeline and approach for doing it and to hear about how we may be able to help with this effort. So I'm looking very much forward to both of those tomorrow. So I think that those are the major things that I wanted to um, uh, share in opening the meeting. I think we've got a really um, interesting uh, couple of um, afternoons or mornings on the West Coast or um, periods of time, wherever you may be, uh, um, ahead of us over the next two days. And I look forward to you um, uh, sharing them with us. We, we obviously had to be very um, choosy about our project briefings because of the extremely limited time that we had together in this uh, synchronous virtual meeting. Uh, but I hope you'll agree that we've done a reasonable job of covering a series of diverse and um, I think significant topics, timely topics, um, as part of the meeting. One of the other things I would just invite you to be thinking about, because it's very much on our mind and we will be asking about it in the meeting evaluation, is um, what, what is going to be the fate of our virtual meetings going forward? Um, we are convening next week our first I'm sorry, our second in-person meeting since the pandemic started in San Diego this time. Um, we had a very successful in-person meeting in December. And I'm hopeful as I see the trajectory of things, although, uh, you know, there's no certainties anymore. Uh, we've certainly learned that over the last couple of years, but I'm hopeful that by this coming December, December of 22, our in-person meeting will see substantially higher attendance than the one that we held in December of 2021. And um, it becomes, increasingly uh, difficult to understand why we want to do both virtual and in-person meetings. It may be that we want to do a virtual meeting that is quite substantially separate in time, for example, from the in-person meeting. Uh, maybe we hold that in, you know, June or something like that. Uh, um, you know, spaced out. Uh, but we need to think pretty carefully, I believe, about what we're trying to accomplish with that virtual meeting if we continue to hold it or if we continue to hold virtual meetings in conjunction with one or both of our um, physical in-person meetings. So as you enjoy the presentations today, um, I just invite you to have that kind of in the back of your head because it is a question that we're thinking a lot about at CNI. I know a lot of other organizations are also struggling with related questions, and uh, we will be having some uh, lengthy conversations with our steering committee on this topic in the um, in the coming months as well. So that's about all I want to say. Thank you for joining us and let me introduce the first um, session. This is a presentation from a team from um, the Mon Montana, University of Montana. Um, Jason Clark, uh, Lila Sturman, and um, Daniel uh, Layden. And it's a really interesting issue. Um, we talk a lot about open access as opening up scholarship to everybody. And that's true in a very literal sense, but only in a very literal sense. Um, really making the 
impact and the insights of scholarship available broadly um, is a much more challenging question. And this was a presentation that I was really delighted to see getting at some of this. Um, I'll just share, you know, one other piece of this as context. Um, when during the Obama administration, they started issuing mandates to agencies to think about making data public, they really struggled at those agencies about the difference between making data accessible and making it meaningfully public. And I think that what we're going to hear here in some of this presentation uh, begins to um, uh, get at some of those issues around scholarly output broadly. So let me welcome um, our presenters today. And I will go away and come back to help out with the Q&A. So, over to you, um, Jason and uh, Leela. Uh, 